The game is live, and uh, we are gonna find out what exactly DRG and Creator are up to. Uh, at the bottom right, we have, of course, our Korean Protoss player. This is Creator, and uh, starting to the top left of Ohana, we have Dong Regu. A man who can write his nickname in Hangul. Yeah, he's on the not in English. Pro S uh, clan tag still on there, and uh, interestingly enough, <laughs> just kind of weird. Uh, the creator has his ID says A Pink, which is of course a girl group out here in Korea. So <laughs> 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 I'm like, now I think I know what creator's favorite K-pop group is. <laughs> I guess. Unless the A-Pink girl just was like, oh, you need to borrow my account, hey, you can use this, it's fine. <laughs> he's like, he's like, thanks, I know we're so close, so. He's like, oh, you're Grandmaster too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's, like, he, she's like, yeah, I know we met each other at uh, the finals that one time when we were doing the performance for GSL. You know, you just really inspired me and I became a StarCraft player, but uh, yeah, sure, you can borrow my account, it's no problem. Yeah, I feel like Creator would pull a Rajesh Kuthropoli and uh, just be like, oops, not say anything. He'd be like, well, you, you know, you can always, you, you can use mine too, uh, I can't play after midnight, so, <laughs> you know, if you like to stay up late, um, you can borrow mine, it's fine. I don't need it after that time. Well, right now what's going to happen here is, uh, first of all, we have the pool timing for DRG pretty normal trying to go into the hatch now, but there is one mean probe out there. Yeah, that probe is such a bully. That drone just wants to make a hatch. He's got one job. You know, it's like when you go to the office to get something, you bring all your papers, and the lady at the desk is like, no, you have this one thing, and you signed it on the wrong line, and you have to come back next week, and that's exactly how that drone feels right now. He's like, listen, I just want to get this done. You know, you can just leave. I don't want to kill you. We can just go our separate ways. You can go back and make a nexus, maybe. Oh. But uh, in all seriousness, this map is a great map to take a third base on. I really like how it plays out when uh, a Pros player takes a third base, and we do get to see that awesome late game that we saw from uh, Creator and Curious that we talked about in this map, because that style of play can be really unique and fun to watch. Yeah, but I feel that a lot of pros players are going to hate you for the comment. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> You're probably getting like letter bombs and stuff. I probably have like all a bunch of angry tweets and wow, well, it's, it's fun to watch. You know, funny, like people suffering. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, no, I just like, wow, you do you think it would be funny if I choke you? You, you watch all those weird videos on the internet. I'm like, no, I, what? <laughs> the second hatch is now up, so it will, well, basically, he's building the second, which means we have three bases now for DRG. And right now, what is going to happen is that we will see a decision being made by Creator as soon as his own, yeah, as his own, the Cybernetics Core is up. Stargate is a build that we see more and more in this matchup. It's not all about the Immortal Push anymore, or about Blink Stalkers, about Gateway Attacks. It's becoming more a question how much damage can you do with your Phoenixes and what kind of follow up do you go for? Are you trying to get your third base or you just follow things up with the Immortal push, with the Colossus push? There are a lot of different times that you can go for, but everything has just been a little bit delayed by the time that the Phoenixes are out that they do initial damage. Yeah, that's that's the key. A lot of people like to use the Phoenixes to pick up Festers and do a timing attack off two bases. Um, that's becoming a little bit more popular. Very important to make sure you don't lose them. Creator, what's he gonna do, man? This is okay. Stargate. This is what we expected. Yep. Nobody does immortal pushes anymore. Actually, it's like the immortal push died with Parting's failed attempts at the Blizzard Cup Finals. Yeah, well, he was trying to do it against Nst, but Nst was just like, "No, nope, I'm gonna seven pull you." No, oh, yeah, you can't. Sorry. I'm sorry, you could try, but no. Well, right now we have the Stargate as mentioned. So, plus one attack upgrade also coming up. So, what we could see here is... I mean, usually with the placement that we have, you would expect the Phoenix opening. We've seen uh, positions like this being used even though uh, Void Ray was the first choice. And a very old build that kind of makes a bit of... Uh, comes back at points is a Void Ray opening, which you're probably not, not going to see with uh, plus one attack upgrades and uh, four additional gates. Right now we have the Phoenix being built and he's probably going to move out with three. 
or with four phoenixes, depending on what timing he wants to hit. Things have been changed a little bit. We talked about it at the GSL. I feel we should mention it here too. Um, a lot of Protoss players will wait or will not wait anymore for the fair four phoenixes because with four phoenixes you lift the queen and you immediately kill it. Yeah. But if you have three, you can hit it a bit earlier and you don't go for the queens because you assume that your opponent is going for additional queens anyways. Yeah. So a queen kill is not that useful to you anymore. You just start to kill drones and overlords. And as a Protoss player, it just is what you feel is more um, suitable in this particular scenario. Yeah. So he could either move out with the third now or wait for the fourth. I feel Creator is going to wait for the fourth, but both is possible for the uh, reasons mentioned. Exactly. And for some reason on my mind right now, actually, so... Strawberry cake? No. Um, Ice cream? No. Pizza? Now it is, but uh, I was thinking about the Phoenixes and their... Uh, their name, the unit name, the Phoenix. The Phoenix is something that rises from the ashes. Um, and I think the reason why that name was chosen is because the original ability was the something overcharge where you could do this AoE damage almost like a storm and then it couldn't move for a while. But anyways, I was thinking about that. I think that would be cool to have reintroduced maybe in a fleet beacon. But he will get that first queen. He waits till four and he hides the Phoenix. This is the scariest version of this attack opponent doesn't know this is coming. Oh, and the second queen That was really weird. Out. It looked like it. It looked like the other one just came and just landed on the ground safely. Yeah, that was actually two queens being killed, guys. Not only one. He didn't drop on the ground and suddenly had full hit points again. And now overlords are dying. So two queens are already dead. Overlords are being eliminated and he's going to get a fair share of them. Yeah, DRG in a little bit of trouble here. He is going to find himself supply blocked if that last one goes down. And we do have the Void Ray follow up here. This is exactly the way that we've seen Genius do this build. So taking a fair amount of uh, resources already out, 812. Oh, the queen out of position, that's oh, never wow. where you want to be. If you have two of those war crawlers in your main mineral line already, you want to have the queen position between the two of them and not on the other side of the hatch. So this really affects now the production of, uh, yeah, of Dongregu. Yep, he wants to come in here and try to force a cancel on this hatchery. Well, on the other hand, there are enough force seals here, and look at the patience of Creator does not even drop a single unnecessary force shield. He will have to drop force shields if DRG commits, but so far Dongrigu does not, but he goes for the surround and Creator oh, wow. was a little bit too hesitant in this case. Yeah, he, he gets a great surround off, and yes, those zealots with a plus one attack upgrade are finally able to clear things up, but still, this was a bit more scary than he should have been. Voidray in the middle of the map now, starting to take out creep tumors with the help of the observer. The phoenixes are still hovering here, just waiting for a queen to appear. He tries to drop another, yeah, another creep tumor. See the third, uh, sorry, the fourth base as well. Yep, grabbing up some of these drones. Only takes down two. The Ling attacks that DRG keeps saying to creators base are just so unsuccessful, and this is one of the reasons why a lot of players did not like this map is because it's so hard to stop a Protoss player from taking that third. Interesting choice for DRG here. We see this, this a little bit more often to go into the Spire in addition to uh, the... Uh, oh, okay, sorry, actually I misread the timing here a little bit, my bad. Infestors are already now on the production tab. We have the Spire as an addition to deal with the Colossi. Um, one of the things that we've seen a bit earlier, or uh, I've seen just recently, was the Spire being built as the direct counter to the phoenixes and uh, not the infestation pit so yeah for a second it's all my excuse is it's six o'clock in the morning in korea we've cast it for quite a long time yeah. so yeah sorry then, for that rain fun yeah exactly uh we've been casting for six french hours here and it starts french to get hours at least eight yeah maybe <laughs> something like that but uh it's, it's always hard to tell i love this void ray play people figured this out he doesn't kill the hatch but he damages it pretty significantly and He'll figure it out that on maps like this, you can use the Voyager to pick up creep tumors with the Observer, or if the hatchery gets taken, which happens oftentimes as a result of Phoenix, because Phoenix can't actually kill a hatchery. You get this energy usage at the Zalnaga Watchtower against the Zerglings is maybe a little bit distant. But you know, the thing is, once again, he knows Infestors are out. He doesn't want to run into a fungal, so killing those Zerglings, what else is he going to do with them? He's going to move back and he will be able to just get a few, a little bit more energy so that in the battle, he can lift the Infestors. Yeah, because he wants to use the energy on Infestors for sure. He kills a few Lings there, 
in total re resource loss in this game more than four times loss for drg versus creator he was very cost efficient with those phoenixes he may get bungled here if he's not careful at the fourth base and the phoenix is moving in again investors are so excited they're coming in here those are carbot investors man they're going to grab the phoenixes and they're going to smash into each other there are 10 of them by now yeah there's so many and DRG is still with the supply lead in total, has those upgrades that we uh, mentioned earlier with a plus of two more to attack upgrade. Yeah, well, that one Void Ray is not going to be a heavy Void Ray any longer. Boom, and down it goes. But here comes the attack for DRG, trying yeah. to break through this defense at the third with Archons, with Colossi ready. Sentries and extra cannons. I am not so sure if that's the best choice, if I he's really going to go gonna for commit it. Because he's got the Hive on the way now. Four more gateways going up for Crater. Looks like he wants yeah. to hit that three base timing, which is such a good uh, timing to hit on not only this yeah. map, but also on Entomb Valley. He shouldn't commit, and him moving back is the best choice. We've seen so many Zergs just die at the hand of a defensive Protoss player when they were trying to crush the third, and DRG decides not to move out. But we have now Crater on uh, the go. He wants to get a fourth base. Yeah, he's not going to hit that timing after all. Just gets ready for the fourth base. He knows he's going to eventually inevitably have. Notice that creator has been so cost efficient that he starts to build a bank here, even on three bases while he's maxed. And we are now at the time where usually this pre boot law timing hits, which is why DRG is now building so many spine crawlers. We have him with additional nine, but he already completed like five or six of them. He's just waiting now back at home, waiting for the Protoss player to engage. He knows that he has to buy some time, and he goes into Greater Spire, Adrenal Glance, plus two plus two for the Roaches, Speed Upgrade for the Bane Links, the Boro Upgrade, everything that he can use in the later stages. But the war prism that just warped in zealots at the main base of the top left that could do some damage But yeah. nice defense so far. He will be able to chase us away with the queen But creator is going for an attack. This is a timing that you would expect. It's not in It's not like an all-in timing attack those corruptors get into archon range and they're taking a ton of hits He needs to be a little more careful with those but the thing is he doesn't have a choice He needs to deal with the cross somehow. Yeah those Phoenix didn't do anything against the investors, and the but Bane trying here to move in. are not really going to be cost efficient that much either. Getting Banelings on and, and Immortal does get some AOE damage off. The though. reinforcements, on the other hand, they are the scary part because those investors are still alive, and now more Infested Terrans are joining the battle. And here but, come those Lings, and the Immortal, uh, sorry, the Colossus and also the Archons are not here to fight them. But the upgrades are a lot better for those Zealots, so the Zerglings don't stand a chance here. Yeah, and that Colossus still remains alive. Looks like. DRG just has way too much production, even though he's fighting an army that was basically designed to kill what he was using, he just overwhelmed it. Yeah, he depleted his entire bank that he had. He had a much better bank here than Crater, and he used it up completely to crush this force. But crush it he did, and now he is on four bases, and if he is... Yeah, if he wants it, he can get the. He should be able to kill Crater's fourth base, but if he waits, Crater has enough economy, and he had a decent bank. So much so that he actually will be able to remax. He's just waiting for the plus uh, for the adrenal glands to be done, and it's just now finished. Yeah. So he's manning up another big force that can go for the fourth base. And Creator, if he loses this economy, he will be in a very dire situation. He needs to be so on top of his force fields here. The zealots are going to go down to those banelings. Good micro by both players. DRG chasing this army down. He wants to get the colossus, and he will. Creator is in a lot of trouble. The DRG is not going for those Broodlords, at least not just yet. I think he's going to hold the first wave, but the second wave is going to be too much. The production of DRG is so much better. That's something the creator just can't keep up with, even though he built a few additional gates. There are Zerglings now suddenly in the mineral line. We have Infested Terrans taking down Phoenixes. This is just it. Creator is falling so far behind. There it is. GG. Game 1 ends in favor of uh, Dongregu. The MVP player does it. Creator on Ohana, it's just not his map.